So every year when I present, there's another kid, but now we're stopping. <laughs> she wants a fourth one, no way. So, uh, so thanks for this opportunity to present uh, the work that we've been doing. And to be very clear, I'm not doing the work, it's my team who's doing the work. So the, and it's not just our team, it's the four I2B2 Transmart PMC. And so why uh, the first question that comes out from uh, many folks is there's the I2B2 platform, there's the Transmart platform. Why is there an I2B2 Transmart platform, a third one? And so what happened is because of the spin off from Transmart to an I2B2, where what we've been doing is to take the best from each platform and then to put them together so that to use the core that the core software coming from Sean's group over there, Sean being here, but his group being here, and then to take the core uh, Transmart coming from Rudy's group uh, over there, to be able to put them together and to reuse so that we have some glue using RESTful APIs like and using the picture API to have something cohesion that enables to, uh, to have a, a platform that can be EU, uh, easily used. One of the core elements that uh, was for us extremely important is to have something that can be used for uh, investigator to have a platform to be able to just be able to touch its own data, where everybody generates a lot of clinical data, genomics data, imaging data, but then being able to have some place to compute and to touch and see its own data wasn't, is not always straightforward. And then also how to be able to share the data. So what we've been doing is having this model in mind for everything that we've been building and to enable using everything on the cloud, using uh, either so virtual machines or directly on the cloud so that it can be uh, easily shareable and fully scalable using the full scalability of, on the cloud for analytics to create this shared secure environment where you have the analytics close to the data into a very secure environment. And this model is what we've been doing and are now in production in uh, more than 10 projects, including the UDN on the diagnosis network project, uh, with clinical genomic data, the, uh, uh, the Precision Link Biobank at Boston Children Hospital, and the green network that enables patient level data and aggregate counts across the three main pediatric hospital across uh, US, and also the data stage project for, with NLHBI to have the top med clinical and genomic data integrated and shared throughout the cloud. And this using and creating HIPAA compliant environment on the cloud and going towards the FISMA moderate compliance also in the context of multiple of those projects. And uh, this is maybe the only slide I would like you to watch if there's only slide that represents what we are building. And this is definitely high level and we're going to much more detail tomorrow uh, with uh, when you'll be able to meet uh, our team of what we have achieved. But what we mean by the I2B2 Transmart platform, which is everything on this slide, that's the I2B2 Transmart platform that contains many different use cases, use interface, one meta API, the picture API that we created with Zach in the context of a BD2K grant, multiple data store for multiple data types. So the I2B2 application is right here. This is using the Docker version from Sean's group directly out of the box without changing it. We did some changes that he put back into his main core. This is the Transmart application from Rudy's group that we propose multiple change, changes that are now in the 16.4. And that's what we call B, exploration to generate hypothesis, the I2B2 Transmart application. So the I2B2 Transmart application is this, and the I2B2 Transmart platform is everything on the slide. I know it's confusing, 
why do you not why having the, all those very complex names but it's just to try to understand what we are talking about so that it's why did we extend it and not try to put everything in the A2B2 Transmart application because of the license issues, because of the, uh, the coding environment where we needed to expand to be able to add new functionalities. Everything is linked using API so that you will have, and everybody has already some existing software that he wants to plug in within the environment. So we stopped building monolithic tools where everything is in one place and trying to fit to put everything into the I2B2 transport application to then realize that we were expanding by creating new models that are considered as bundles to be able to be plug and play depending on what you need so that the same data can be accessed through different user interface for different use case A, B and C depending on the level of sophistication of the user. A, very simple, Google Lite, because a lot of users were saying that Transmart or I2B2 or, or I2B2 Transmart application were too complex. So we needed to have something much easier. And what is the best query tool in the world? Google. And so we, need, we created something that looks like Google in the context of having one search bar when you start typing something without even knowing what you're starting to type, and that will automatically guess the device data types. So that's the A, feasibility query and code builder. And I'll show you a quick live demo. B, exploration to generate hypothesis. This is the I2B2 Transmart application, taking the latest version of Transmart in production, latest version of I2B2, that enables to explore all the clinical data. And then C, using Jupyter Notebooks because you are not going to be able to publish a full paper just using a user interface. There's only one or two papers that manage to do that using the, the like, for example, Zach's query on autism comorbidity using the Shrine network in the, in, uh, that he published in PLOS One, but you were using just a user interface because there's so many different pieces of the code that you need to change. You need to write code. There's no magic behind this. And that you want to use code using the same underlying data that you use in the context of generating the hypothesis. So that's why we use Jupyter Notebooks in R or Python using the picture API so that you access the exact same data, clinical and genomic data. And then you have your full spectrum of your analysis that you can publish and, and in the context of your paper. And so this A, B, and C is, that, is just three different views three different user interface to enable A being extremely simple, B a bit more complex, and C you have to write code. But then we provide examples of how to get started for your analysis. And then I'll be showing you a few, a few different projects. One of them, NLHBI TopMed project, where we are integrating within this platform 186,000 full genomes. Those are not SNPs array, those are not exomes, nearly 190,000 full genomes that are integrated within this platform that enables to link between the clinical data and the genomic data. The clinical data behind the samples in the context of TopMed are, for example, the Framingham Heart Study, which is a very well-known study with three generations, 69,000 clinical variables per patient with three generations of patients and many other high quality research cohorts and the use case i'll be showing you for the demo is using one of those cohorts copd gene that is uh, where the pi at silverman is across the street where there's ten thousand participants and the demo i'll show you has a thousand eight hundred full genomes and that's a total of 75 million variants linked to all the clinical data within this data set the use case I'll show you comes from a published study that they did or where they looked and discovered sp specific uh, variants that are linked to patients with the COPD, uh, so uh, chronic or obstetric uh, disease, and that are not present within control. And this variant that they published in this paper is on the chromosome 4, a dislocation where you have a C instead of a T, which is present only in cases that's the allele frequency in cases, but not present in control. 
So this, this is a real published uh, example. And that's what I'm, I'm going to show you. So I'm logging in the platform. And what we created is this user interface of the I2B Tutor Smart platform that we call the simple user U, uh, UI. The simple user interface is the default for our I2B Tutor Smart platform. The default when you log in into our environment, that's what you get now. Search. If you want to look at what you already know about the I2B Tutor Smart application, we call that now the B, the advanced search, so that you have all the I2B tree, drag and drop, and all this. But the simple one, the A, is this one. And I can just start ty typing, for example, smoking. So have you ever smoked cigarette? And automatically, it recognizes this is clinical data. It's not genomic data. And by clicking on it, I have the various values and drilling in the data. This is not cached. This is running in real time with the picture API behind the scene so have you ever smoked cigarette yes this was a categorical variable now i'm also going to look at the cases i want only the cases the affection status case control so this is based on the data and the number of patients just reduce so this is one of the other use case as uh, Sean mentioned, of the user interface that is using an underlying i2b2 database underneath the scene and then now I'm looking at a numerical value, age at enrollment. Now, by numerical value, I'll say between, for example, 60 and 80 years old, narrowing down the number of patients. But now the whole magic is to be able to put a variant. I'm making a query using here the picture API behind the scene, but I base I, 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 against the 75 million variants, that's a 100 gigabyte file. And automatically it recognizes that it's a variant. Do I want the homozygous or heterozygous for this variant? Then, in less than a tenth of a second, and this is not cached, we are able to retrieve the number of patients with, that has all this detail of the clinical data, but now also the variant data. So the variant is not stored in the I2B2 database model, because it didn't work in the context of the scalability to have all genome data at this scale. So we, that's why we created the high performance data store that enabled us to store the variant data. And then you can have the clinical data in I2B2 or in any other data store that is connected through this layer of the picture API that enables you to connect. Because you all have in your research environment already clinical data store or variant data store, or any store, and you want to connect them. So that's what we wanted to create using with the picture meta API that enables a connection between the systems. And so now, three cases that has all those conditions, if I change case into a, now looking at the controls, zero patients. So I was able to reproduce something, which is the main outcome of this paper, based on looking at the result of uh, this GWAS and to check if in this data set, and obviously I get the same result because it's the same data. And so this is what we call the simple user interface. Now, if I click on advanced search, that's where you will recognize the I2B2 side on the left and the Transmart side on the right to enable, and that's the use case B, of to be able to generate hypothesis. And so I can look at uh, now the affection status. I want to compare case versus control, summary statistics. And this is the same data that you saw from the other user interface. It's just another view of the data. And I'm comparing case versus control, where the COPD gene cases have uh, all the 63 years old versus 55 years old. And I want to look at the saturation of oxygen based on all the different clinical data points. So O2, for example, oxygen, automatically narrows down from the I2B2 tree using the Transmart functionality to be able to search at all the variables where there's the, the, the notion of oxygen. For example, resting saturation of oxygen in percentage, drag and drop. 
And so there's no, there's no magic here. This is showing you the Transmart application, but instead of having just Transmart, it's the I2B2 Transmart application, because here it's a real I2B2 database out of the box coming from Sean's group, where we just put them together. And so you can see here the saturation of oxygen, 95% for the cases versus 98% for the controls, which makes sense where in this disease, your saturation of oxygen will decrease. So what I just showed you so far is how, based on, I was showing you a demo of the use case, A, feasibility query and cohort builder using the picture user interface, the simple UI, and then the advent is the exploration to generate hypothesis. The number C, the third one, is actually directly writing code into Jupyter Notebook environment or any environment where you have in R or Python to be able to query. And so that's even all slides because now we have Nick who created a new client based on the, new, the version two of the picture API to have something even more uh, streamlined in the context of accessing the clinical variables. So you don't have to download the full file. You can just go and pick and select the clinical variables of interest for your research analysis, retrieve the data, and then be in your research environment uh, in R and Python or whatever so that you can reproduce the analysis. And so what we are doing is every single one of our papers, of our research papers, and you'll see this tomorrow if you come to the workshop, where we have the code in Jupyter Notebooks that are made available in GitHub so that anyone with access to the same data will be able to reproduce and get the same results. That's a key component to, be, to enable this. And now showing you uh, just screenshots of other production environment we have at Boston Children's Hospital, the biobank led by Ken Mandel, where we have the, uh, the functionality for BCH investigator to also request direct access to the data and all the samples as needed, or in the context now in the Genomic Research Innovation Network across Boston Children's Cincinnati and CHOP, where you have now the aggregate counts across those individuals. So this is a shrine-like network that enables aggregate counts, but also patient-level data queries of all the clinical data and the genomic data as needed, depending on the different authorization to, in the context of retrieving the data. So for example, here, epilepsy and recurrent seizure with a sample being available in the fridge right now, and or to be able to query per genomic data. So to have all the variants available from the variant stores accessible from the, the different institutions that can be queried. And now a last example from the other diagnosis network uh, project where everyone that has access to this environment where there's 250 approved in investigators, they are allowed to download the data, the patient, the, uh, patient level data, clinical and genomic data, and they wanted to generate this, the, the, the spreadsheet directly to be in, uh, integrated into the research environment. So we added an export function where here, as usual, you'll define your cohort, which patients you want, but then there's the function of exports, where you decide which columns, which variables you want to export to download and create your Excel sheet, your CSV file, that you can then directly analyze within your software tool. So without writing a line of code, you are able to get the Excel sheet with one line per patient, one column per fact, based on the data that you're interested in. Everything I showed you in my previous slide, everything that we have developed is under an Apache license to every new piece of code. So, so does it mean that the I2B2 section is under Apache 2? No, the Transmart, no, it's under GPL3, but every new piece of code that we have developed is under this the, the, the maybe one of the best uh, for academia uh, so, um, uh, source code that enables to be able to reuse it uh, um, uh, without any uh, constraining issues. And then the, in order to have the environment I just showed you, is the code available? Yes, we released it 
And so now, in not just as a quick start, but as a production environment, you have a HIPAA compliant environment in the cloud. And so that's where you can have the what we call on the I2P2 Transmart GitHub, the picture I2P2 Transmart that enables to have those different views from the the quick start, the, the simple user interface, the A, the B, and the C to connect also via the picture API. And so that's the tiny URL, I2B2 Transmart uh, 19, to be able to have a production, a re reference implementation for your production environment to be able to use everything that I showed you. And it's the same code that we use today in production throughout all those projects. There's, not a diff there's no changes. It's exactly the same one that we use. So we have an I2B2 Transmart PMC uh, we, with various members that where we meet every month in the context of looking at the progress throughout those projects. And anyone here is welcome to participate to help us to um, uh, provide uh, contribution in the context of uh, helping, uh, of testing it in the context of uh, 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 making sure that it goes into a path where they will be able to use it within, the, within each of their environments. And so all this without, uh, wouldn't have been possible without uh, our team, where you have on, on the side the data scientists, postdoc students, but then on the other side, all the staff and software developers that enable this uh, to be um, uh, in the context of having something that is directly useful because the purpose of what we are trying to do is not to create yet another database for the purpose of creating another database, but you have something that is useful straight away that can help to do research uh, and not just another user interface to do some nice queries. So that's something that is very important for us. And so that's why, as we did last year, but then we extended this year, if you want to learn more, you can look at on the last page of the document on your table, you will see that tomorrow from 10 a.m. and not 8 a.m. as in initially, but 10 a.m. is a bit better. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., you will have on the DBMI at a country library on the fourth floor, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, hands-on workshop um, uh, meeting with our team to be able to see the software developers uh, that are in Boston and the postdoc and, and students that are also in Boston to, so that they will show you their work with their laptop so you can see various aspects of the environment on the app side or on the scientist side of how this infrastructure is used in real in order to conduct research. And so if I can have members of my team stand up, stand up please. Yep, stand up and wave your hand so that you can uh, meet with them during the birthday, which is right behind, and, or, and also, most importantly, tomorrow, so that you can have an idea, a sense of making sure to answer to your question of how to, so that you, you will be able to use this code and test this platform uh, and uh, enhance it based on your need when you go back home. That's the whole purpose, because this is definitely a, a true community uh, development. And the, uh, so that's why we definitely need uh, your feedback to, uh, to improve what we have uh, started to build. Thank you. Yes. No, you, can you repeat the question? Depending on the data that you put into it. At the end, it really depends on what, uh, and it always comes down to what is the consent and what is the IRB approval of where you can put this data, what you can do with it. So some of our, our environment are completely publicly available. So no login, no password and it can be hosted anywhere and that's why you can download it on your laptop where we have from the quick start guide uh, um, when Jay uh, and his team put up the uh, enhanced data set 41,000 patients that you can download on your laptop 
So there's, uh, it can run on your laptop. So you can have the, 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 this whole environment running on your laptop. Uh, but then there's other data sets that must stay, for example, with the data stage project, it must stay on Amazon or Azure or Google in the North uh, East region. And that's a constraint based on how the data were, is being shared. So it always comes down to where can you put your data? For example, also having partners data on one of the public cloud is something that uh, we're waiting for, but the, uh, it's, at the end, it really de uh, comes down to what is the requirement based on the data. And so that's why you can have, we created everything to have something extremely secured up to uh, FISMA moderate compliance. Uh, that's why we're going towards and have uh, in the context of being reviewed for uh, an ATO and to enable so that even if you're using publicly available data to have the same environment, because it's much easier to have only one piece of code with all the security boundaries. And that's what AJ will be talking if you come and meet with him tomorrow, AJ, of uh, how, uh, to, uh, how we managed to get the HIPAA compliance at Boston Children's Hospital and also at uh, HMS. Good, thanks.